OK, sorry about that. Um, this is 3.2. In 3.2, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to solve a system of equations algebraically. Because obviously, the way that we did it last class period was you just take both equations, graph them, right, and determine where they intersected, right? Now we're going to learn the algebraic methods. And the first one, Stephanie, is substitution. All right. And basically, what substitution we're going to do, there's a couple tips. Now, obviously, on the algebraic methods, guys, you can always do substitution. You can always do elimination. But there are a couple times when doing substitution to solve algebraically is easier than doing elimination. And the points when that kind of comes up is whenever you have coefficients of your variable that are either 1 or negative 1. So whenever I look at a problem and I see that there's a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, I always like to use substitution. The reason being is because to do substitution, the first thing we have to do is isolate one of the variables. We have either x or y. We have to isolate it. That means solve for that variable. So I'll ask Jack, which variable Now, Well, Jack, you see that y has a coefficient of 1 and x has a coefficient of 1. That means it's about equally um, as hard to solve for each one of those. So which one would you like to solve for? Which one would you like to isolate first, the x or the y? Never heard what? Equally, to Equally yeah. I don't, know, I don't know what I was really trying to say. Um, which one? You like to solve for x, OK? And some of you might say, oh, I'd rather solve for y. It doesn't really matter. Um, since they both have a coefficient of 1, they're like, diff you know, as far as solving for them, it's going to be about the same. So let's solve for x. So I have x minus 2y equals 3. So to solve for x, I just add 2y equals 3. What am I doing? Add 2y on both sides. x equals 3 plus 2y. OK, hold on. The quick little step, though, just imagine, guys, if this was 2, if this was 2x minus 2y equals 3, can you guys see why solving for x would be more difficult? Because then you have to add 2 and then divide by 2, right? Not saying it can't be done. It's just more work. So that's why you always want to look for the coefficient that has a 1 as its, uh, or a variable that has a coefficient of 1. All right, so now I've solved for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this equation with x minus 2y equals 3, and I'll just rewrite the second one. OK, so all I did was I just rewrote this equation. x equals 3 plus 2y. You want to write it as it's solved for. That's the whole purpose. So the first step in doing substitution is solving for a variable. Obviously, pick the variable that's easiest to solve for, which has a coefficient of 1. Now, let's go back to some old stuff. If I had 5x equals 2x minus 5, and I say find f of 2. This was in 2.1. We talked about relations and functions. Jaden, do you remember what I did with the 2? When I say evaluate for f of 2, what would you do with the 2? Do you remember? OK. So another thing, Jaden, what we talked about in chapter 2.2 is I said x equals 2. Then what do we do with that 2? You plug it in for x. That's f of 2 equals 2 times 2 minus 5. What for that? Yeah, I, well, I know. I, do you understand, though, how you take whatever your value is, you plug it in? right? The reason why is because x is equal to 2. 2 is equal to x. You can substitute one value for the other. Does that make sense? Okay, that's how we evaluate functions. That's what we talked about functions, evaluating functions. But now, we're not evaluating functions. All I'm saying is, I know that x is equal to 3 plus 2y. All right, so can I substitute x in, or can I substitute in 3 plus 2y in for x? Just like I did x's for 2? It's just an expression, but n instead of a number. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So step number two is once you solve your variable, you plug in that value, substitute it in for the variable of the other equation. So now you have 3 times 3 plus 2y plus y is equal to negative 5. And now something very, very important has happened. We have now created an equation that only includes one of the variables. Because now when we have one equation and one variable, we can solve that. You guys know how to do it. This is called a multi-step equation. Remember multi-step equations with the variable on the same side? We did these. So now we apply distributive property. 9 plus 6y plus y equals negative 5. 9 plus 7y equals negative 5. 
subtract 9, subtract 9. Did I do something wrong? I don't remember getting this answer. OK, whatever. 7y equals, oh, yeah, that's it. Um, it's a 9. Yeah, so it's negative 14. So now y equals negative 2. But remember, guys, when we were doing the intersection, we had a coordinate point. We had an x and a y, correct? Right? So therefore, that's the y coordinate. To find the x coordinate, we just need to plug back into our equation. And the best equation to plug into to solve for x is the one that's already solved for x. So I had to say x equals 3 plus negative 2 times, oops, 2 times negative 2. x equals 3 minus 4 x equals negative 1. So now, if you were to like visualize the graphs, you don't even know what to need to know what the graphs look like, but you know that these two, if you graph them, would intersect at the coordinate point negative 1, negative 2. And then also going back to, Marissa, our solutions, the, since this has an intersection point, this is a consistent, consistent system that is independent. OK? Wait, I have a question. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Just plugged it in for Y, though. 